So as we end the year 2023, uh, how do you see this year has been for the entrepreneur, the ecosystem here, uh, the startup culture, you know, just, uh, the system of innovation scene? So we are very fortunate to be in Silicon Valley because it is always innovating. And in spite of the economic uh, dark cloud in the beginning of the year, I think there was there is so much uh, going on in AI and in healthcare and life sciences that companies and entrepreneurs have continued to get funding. And more importantly, uh, I would say that some of the displaced engineers and leaders in technology have taken this opportunity to actually go into entrepreneurship and start their own companies. So in many ways, it's been a silver lining. And um, and so the year, I think, has been, it, it started off a little rough, but by mid-year, everything started to pick up. And uh, we see a lot more entrepreneurs and young aspiring entrepreneurs who actually even from colleges are saying that they want to innovate or they've got an idea and they're you know testing it out so i think it's been a good year so far and all indicators are that it's going to pick up but still we see a lot of people not getting the funding the joblessness is still there why is it so well you know i mean at the end of the day uh, interest rates are high money is tight right. so um, certainly the venture and uh, the venture capitalists and the investors are going to be looking at all of those indicators and whereas it was a lot easier to even get funding on a slide right. now it's not that easy right so um, so I think that conservatism is very uh, natural and to some degree it mirrors the economic down and now as we are seeing more jobs in the valley and as we are seeing more uh, a little bit of an uptick i think that that funnel will open up a little bit as, as someone who is leading the thai silicon valley it's very prestigious organization what do you think should prize your role thai's role would be in this new year what are the priorities now so i think our primary role is to make sure that entrepreneurs are getting enough of an opportunity to be in front of investors so that they can get investments and keep their companies going. Thai Silicon Valley Angels is also a place where there is a lot of seed investment going on. And I think the other part of it is how do we make sure that corporate executives and decision makers of enterprises are also put in front of these startups and entrepreneurs so that they can provide the opportunity to do proof of concepts and actually sell to the enterprises. So I think our job over this next year will be to bring the buyer yeah. and, the, and the financiers right. towards the entrepreneurs. Thai Silicon Valley has also been played an important role in promoting entrepreneurs, mentoring entrepreneurs. What role do you see now? We have always uh, been very focused on mentoring and networking but one of the things that we are very focused on in the coming year is incubation and acceleration and it is for that reason that we actually have a facility now and we're going to be moving into a facility in 2024 where we will have cohorts so that they can actually um, get that mentorship they can get the teaching for how do you start a business you can get a mini MBA as well as forums where VCs will be in those facilities so they can have that direct opportunity to connect with them so that is the big role that we see you know people in India and India itself feels proud in so many Indian Americans here being successful here and they look at Thai Silicon Valley and Indian Americans in this valley on how they can help India go further can you throw some insight into it? What role does Silicon Valley can play in, in India's digital issue? So we see ourselves, Thai Silicon Valley is really the gateway for the global entrepreneur. And, uh, you know, a bulk of those global entrepreneurs are coming from India. Right. And certainly the more recent uh, 
MOU that we have signed with the Indian government, specifically with STPI that governs uh, 22 centers of entrepreneurship across the country. That is going to be allowing a bi-directional uh, interaction where investors from Silicon Valley will be going and meeting with startups, curated startups in India, and vice versa, startups from India are going to be coming to Thai Silicon Valley for the Silicon Valley immersive programs to understand how to grow their markets in the United States, how to raise money in the US. So that's how we anticipate that working, so and that's a big part. Indian, Indian startups incubating them, helping them. Promote yes, the yes. Care. That has been the conversation with the STPI director, yes. How do you see India's digitization program, India developing in those things? You know, sitting where I am, having seen the uh, digital stack of India, yeah. I think that India has is the North Star. Um, India is the gold star. It's the North Star for North all star. countries okay. for taking the digital stack to the common man. And uh, it is amazing. I mean, today, there are 20 countries that, that are using the Indian digital stack. I just heard them tell me that next year there will be 50. And when you think about it, if there are more than 800 million people who are completely on the digital stack in India, here we are with a population of 300 million odd, and uh, we are nowhere close. And so it, it's I think in this particular case, it's not about how do you see India's digital stack growing. I wish I had the, the I had the insight of how we could make the U.S. digital stack grow the same way, so that the common man is completely connected in all of their uh, digital and online activities, the way people are in India. So this is at least one area where the U.S. can take some clues from India, right? Yes, yes, yes. But you know, like in everything, just like in telecom, India's acceleration into mobile and 4G and 5G was a lot faster because they didn't have to go from analog to digital. For the US, we had to go from analog to digital. And I think the challenge with, uh, with all of us in the US is that a lot of our systems are digital in, in silos. And so getting them all to talk to each other is a much bigger challenge than just introducing a totally new stack that India did. So yes, we are a little behind. Uh, can we do it? We are Silicon Valley, we are America, and uh, as a citizen of the United States, I definitely feel very uh, hopeful that we are going to get there with hopefully India's help. As a as person of Indian origin, look, here, being here, how do you see India's development has taken place in the last 10 years or 15 years? I think this is India's decade, and it's India's decade to lose because we are on such, a, India is on such a winning track right now. Um, and I feel proud to be uh, of Indian origin. I feel, pr I feel uh, proud and uh, every time I go to India and I've just come back, I see uh, the freeways, I traveled on the road uh, a lot uh, and I saw trucks and I saw new vehicles big, you know, uh, the common man has doesn't have to worry about heat anymore, the buses are air conditioned, but it is just seeing the amount of trade that is going on. And that's evident when you're driving because you see all the logistics and how much, you know, construction also there's going on, the infrastructure build. I mean, India being the largest purchaser of the fleet from Boeing uh, just puts, her, uh, puts India at a very different level right now from, a U, uh, you know, in terms of a U.S. context. So I really am very, very uh, positive and uh, very bullish on India. And we keep our fingers crossed that there are no missteps uh, because at the end, India is the largest democracy. And in a democracy, strange things can happen. And so we hope that the that the course that has been set by the current leadership will continue that way, uh, and the course will not and they will not deter from that course, because I think that uh, India has a lot to offer, 
a youthful population that is highly educated, that is very tech savvy, and this commitment to entrepreneurship is what's going to lead India into the next century. If I read in between the lines what you have said, you are you are wishing that the prime minister comes back to power next year. You know, I'm not political. I uh, but. Whatever happens, we don't want the path to change. Now, you know, parties, uh, elections can do strange things, new parties come and sometimes change is almost something that a party feels they have to do, even if the path is correct. So that's why democracy has um, got its own challenges. One last question. You know, India has produced a large number of entrepreneurs and startups. They all look at Silicon Valley for for guidance, motivations. What would be your message to those young generation of Indians? So my message to those young generation of entrepreneurs is one: um, when you get to a point of success, be sure that you uplift another entrepreneur to success, because. It is all about uplifting each other, that the nation will move forward. And that is what has happened in Silicon Valley. And um, as far as Silicon Valley is concerned, I am really bullish on the India-Silicon Valley corridor. I think that a lot can happen. One, because uh, the Indian diaspora is very, very strong. And, uh, and now we have the Indian, uh, the U.S. political system getting a lot more influence of the Indian diaspora, and so all of these factors are going to help the uh, entrepreneurship, this, uh, the ability to succeed at both ends of this pipeline.